the book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 20. And it came to pass in the seventh year, in the fifth month, the tenth day of the month, that certain of the elders of Israel came to inquire of the Lord and sat before me. Then came the word of the Lord unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto the elders of Israel, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Are ye come to inquire of me? As I live, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. Wilt thou judge them, son of man? Wilt thou judge them? Cause them to know the abominations of their fathers? And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, In the day when I chose Israel, and lifted up mine hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob, and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I lifted up mine hand unto them, saying, I am the Lord your God. In the day that I lifted up mine hand unto them, to bring them forth out of the land of Egypt, into a land that I had espied for them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Then I said unto them, Cast ye away every man the abominations of his eyes, and defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. But they rebelled against me, and would not hearken unto me. They did not every man cast away the abominations of their eyes, neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. But I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen among whom they were, in whose sight I made myself known unto them in bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. Wherefore, I caused them to go forth out of the land of Egypt and brought them into the wilderness. And I gave them my statutes and shewed them my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctify them. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walked not in my statutes, and they despised my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. And my Sabbath they greatly polluted. Then I said I would pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. But I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen in whose sight I brought them out. Okay, this is only halfway over, but I have to, I feel like, okay, first of all, that mana, what do they, what can you do so abominable in the desert except keep saying, I'm sick of this, I'm sick of this, let us go back to Egypt, it's worse. Okay, what, there's nothing else to do except complain. And God saw those complaints. Is, are those, is that what is being spoken about? Well, I just want to throw in that I think manna is like coconut flour. Coconut flour. I haven't baked with it a lot, just a, a few times, but I don't know why anybody's bothering with this matzo, this matzo stuff. And actually, if you take a look at coconut flour, it, it's probably... To me, it kind of symbolizes, you know, that food coming from heaven, maybe. Because, look, you can cook with it on Passover. But I think they got sick of their coconut flour, and God got really mad. And But what is confusing here is this is just um, keeping up appearances, right? He said it twice now. God has said this twice, that... Well, I was going to destroy them. I was going to destroy them. And while they were in Egypt, they kept, they wouldn't stop. They wouldn't stop. Uh, 
idolizing other gods while they're in Egypt. I think that's really what's going on. It's the idolizing, even in the desert. It's not the fact that they're saying we're sick of this. They continued, like, not trusting somehow. Uh, but this is what's strange to me. But I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen. In his sight, I brought them out. So he's keeping it appearances for the heathen. It's the second time he said that. Okay. <clears throat> Yet also I lifted up mine hand, my hand unto them in the wilderness. That I would not bring them into the land which I had given them flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Because they despised my judgments and walked not in my statutes, but polluted my Sabbaths for their heart went after other idol, after their idols. It's like, okay, you're in the desert. You're gonna, you're all going to be forced to do Sabbath anyway. So I feel that they're not just complaining about the bread, that they are indeed missing their Egyptian idols or their idols they had before they even went into Egypt, which is the... Well, you can't really say that. Were they doing so much idolatry? They were doing a lot of idolatry before they went to Babylon, but... Um, they had some, but I think the problem in the desert was the main problem because they can't get out of the Sabbath, right? They're still doing idolatry. They're still probably thinking about Egyptian gods. They were there for 400 years, right? Well, why wouldn't they? Are you supposed to snap out of it? I think these are strange things to say that God is not God is not going to destroy them because he because well goodness look at all the heathen look at all the Gentiles um that saw this happen what's he going to do about them but that makes no sense he doesn't care about them too much right who cares what they think they're not his chosen people. This doesn't make sense. Nevertheless, mine eyes spared them from destroying them. Neither did I make an end of them in the wilderness. But I said unto the children in the wilderness, Ye walk ye not in the statutes of your fathers, neither observe their judgments, nor defile yourselves with their idols. I am the Lord your God. Walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. And hallow my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. Notwithstanding the children... Notwithstanding, the children rebelled against me. They walked not in my statutes, neither kept my judgments to do them, which, if a man do, he shall even live in them. They polluted my Sabbaths, and I said I would pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the wilderness. Nevertheless, I withdrew mine hand and wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted in the sight of the heathen in whose sight I brought them forth. Here we go. That's the third time. I lifted up my hand unto them also in the wilderness that I would scatter them among the heathen and disperse them through the countries because they had not executed my judgments but had despised my statutes and had polluted my Sabbaths and their eyes were after their father's idols. Wherefore I gave them also statutes that were not good and judgments whereby they should not live. And I polluted them in their own gifts. Oh, that doesn't sound right. He gave them statutes that were not good and judgments whereby they should not live. When did that happen? That's questionable. And I polluted them in their own gifts in that they caused to pass through the fire at fire all that openeth the womb that I might make them desolate to the end. They might know that I am the Lord. Oh. Um. I don't know. 
Therefore, son of man, speak unto the house of Israel and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, yet in this your fathers have blasphemed me, in that they have committed a trespass against me. For when I had brought them into the land, for the which I lifted up mine hand to give it to them, then they saw every high hill and all the thick trees, and they offered their, their sacrifices, and there they presented the provocation of their offering. They also made their sweet savor and poured out their, their drink offerings. Then I said unto them, You know that thing where people go, it's for the dead homies, it's for the dead homies. It's the same thing. See? And poured out their, their drink offerings. For the dead homies, bro. Then I said unto them, What is the high place whereunto ye go? And the name thereof is called Bama unto this day. Okay. This is going to be a high place, a bad place that is still there. We can maybe put a picture of it on the description. Wherefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Are ye polluted after the manner of your fathers, and commit ye whoredom after their abominations? For when ye offer your gifts, when ye make your sons to pass through the fire, ye pollute yourself with all your idols, even unto this day. And shall I be inquired of by you, O house of Israel? As I live, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. Okay, that's why. All those elders, he says, don't even ask me any questions. And you see, that's why. Because the whoredoms, the bomb, uh, the whoredoms, the taking of the first, sacrificing the first born to the god Moloch. He says that's just like yesterday and you're still doing it. Don't even, I, you are not going to ask me anything because that's who you are. Okay. And that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all that ye say we will be as the heathen, as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone. Right? Serving their wood and stone idols. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. And there will I plead with you face to face. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. And I will cause you to pass under the rod and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Now, and I will purge out from among you the, rebe the rebels and them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. As for you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, go ye, serve ye every one his idols. And hereafter also, if ye will not hearken unto me, but pollute ye my holy name no more with your gifts and with your idols. He doesn't want to hear anything they have to say at all. He's done with them. For in mine holy mountain, in the mountain of the height of Israel, saith the Lord God, there shall all the house of Israel, all of them in the land, serve me. There will I accept them, and there will I require your offerings and the first fruits of your oblations with all your holy things. I will accept you with your sweet savor when I bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein ye have been scattered, and I will be sanctified in you before the heathen. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I shall bring you into the land of Israel, into the country for the which I lifted up mine hand to give you give it to your fathers. And there shall ye remember your ways and all your doings wherein ye have 
been defiled, and ye shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for all your evils that ye have committed. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have wrought with you for my name's sake, not according to your wicked ways, nor according to your corrupt doings. O ye house of Israel, saith the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy faith face toward the south, and drop thy word toward the south, and prophesy against the forest of the south field. And say to the forest of the south, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will kindle a fire in thee, and it shall devour every green tree in thee, and every dry tree. The flaming flame shall not be quenched, and all faces from the south to the north shall be burned therein. And all flesh shall see that I, the Lord, have kindled it. It shall not be quenched. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, they say of me, Doth he not speak parables? I think he's joking because there's, there's not one parable spoken right there. These are direct um, analysis, direct reasons. These uh, There is not one parable. There might be, but these are very clear statements. And then I said, I, O oh Lord God, they save me, doth he not speak in parables? There's nothing about a parable in that chapter at all. It's God talking straight. In fact, to be honest with you, I don't think he's talked so much for this long straight in this book. But it could be just me. But I read it all up to here, and I he has not... It's hard to tell because this book is so abstract, but um, this is not a parable. This is God saying, oh yeah, no, this is exactly what you did, exactly. It's not a type of fable or parable or anything unclear, it's completely direct. And I, again, it sounds like it's God talking and it sounds like he's mostly talking through this whole chapter. He's not spoken as much at any point to anyone in particular or even his people, as far as I can tell. It's really seems like that. <clears throat> 